been struggling with undeposited funds, you're wondering what is it and how it can benefit you within QuickBooks. You are in the right place. If we've never met before, hello, I'm Candice Camper, and I love to help business owners and bookkeepers create confidence with QuickBooks. And I was recently sharing on Instagram and Facebook about what undeposited funds is, and you asked for a more in-depth tutorial training. And if you are a QuickBooks online user, you are in the right place. If you're looking for the desktop version, go up above or down below, and I will link it there for you. So let's talk about what is undeposit funds. Undeposit funds within QuickBooks is what I refer to as the bank bag. This is my little prop for today, okay? So the benefit of a bank bag, do you remember when you used to fill out a deposit slip and you'd have every one of your checks or cash, what the customer paid, and then you'd total it all up and you'd take one deposit to the bank. Or if you're currently using merchant fees, all of your different sales come together and then you get one deposit within QuickBooks. So then when you go to reconcile, when you combine the two of these together, it makes your life so much easier because you are totaling all of the money that you received in on that deposit so that it matches your reconciliation. Let me know in the comments if that makes sense. And if you're like, oh my gosh, aha moments. I love to hear your aha moments. So always share them below. So let's jump into QuickBooks. I'm going to show you how this works within the software. So you're going to create an invoice for your customer whether you're using invoices or a sales receipt, just know that an invoice goes then to your customer actually paying you, right? So invoices is accounts receivable. Your customer pays you, you record a deposit. Now with a sales receipt, it takes both and puts them together. When you're receiving a payment, whether it's from a customer who paid you or on your sales receipt, there is a little account here that it says, where do you wanna record it? Do you wanna go straight to your bank account or undeposit funds? So if you wanna use undeposit funds because you have many different payments that you wanna to put together, then this is the correct account for you, all right? So let's say that you've been doing that, you've been doing that the whole time, but where you've been struggling with is like, what's the next step? I prefer to come over to here where we click new and we click bank deposit. Yes, online has bank feeds, but it can get a little tricky. So I prefer to first, do the bank deposit and match it in the bank feed, which I'll show you in a moment. So you're gonna come in here, you're gonna decide which account to go to on what date. Then down below here where it says, select the payments included in this deposit. Remember, we're selecting everything that goes together. You can use undeposit funds for only one deposit when you go to actually deposit, or it can be 50, 100, it doesn't matter. It's whatever actually happened in your bank. Now, I often get asked a question, okay, what about this, what about that? You're always going to do this based off exactly what happened in your bank. Okay. Don't try to get tricky with QuickBooks. Do what happened and you'll notice you have a lot less mistakes. Okay. So you want to look, if it's the first time you've ever looked in here, what's happening with your undeposit funds? Do you have a lot of old mistakes that shouldn't be in there? This should only be any deposits that you just haven't in QuickBooks recorded yet. Okay. You haven't recorded in QuickBooks yet. If they're back from many, many years ago, then you're probably gonna need help cleaning those up. If that is something you need help with, I teach that inside my QuickBooks Simplified community. Every single month, we focus on a new area of QuickBooks to clean up. I'm actually doing a cleaning up QuickBooks workshop, so if you wanna identify if you have mistakes and need help with that, you can come to the free training and go to candiscamper.com forward slash clean up to access that training, okay? So you're gonna come in here and you're going to select all of the payments that you want recorded in to this specific deposit, okay? So this is saying the full deposit that we're taking to the bank, that we did take to the bank, is 2,062.52. Highly recommend doing this after you've deposited in case you have anything that comes up with any mistakes. So when you're in here, you can click this little drop down if you can see it down here, it's a little green arrow. It says save and close, that means you're closing the total deposit, that's all you have. Save and new means I'm gonna make an additional deposit, okay? So we'll click save and close. Now that you've recorded it, you can match it in your bank feed. So you'll notice if you go down here under accounting and look at your chart of accounts and view your register for that account, you'll notice your deposit is right here. Once it actually clears the bank, it will match as long as you did it on the right date and the right account. If you go under bank feeds and you wanna do it there, I'll show you why I like doing the match feature versus the add feature. So if you come in here and you receive money, you can click on it and then go try to find the customer. It gets a little tricky though sometimes doing that. So what I prefer is that we've already recorded it and instead we are matching it. So you'll notice down here, you have a customer that paid and it's coming, it's already recorded the deposit and we're just matching if we click on that. 
We're just matching what actually cleared the bank. See, here's an un where they used undeposited funds in a prior transaction. This is a sample file. But they have the deposit total amount and all of the different customers that make up that $868.15. See that? So that's the benefit of undeposited funds. It takes all of your customer payments and puts it together. You record it as a deposit and then we're just matching it in QuickBooks from the bank feed. Because remember, the purpose of the bank feed for online users and desktop users is to bring in the transactions from the bank and then just match that what happened in the bank is also what you did in QuickBooks. Now, never take that for granted. You still want to be doing the reconciliation to compare them. But won't it make your reconciliations so much easier if you are doing them, if you learn how to use the bank feeds, which I just taught you, so that the total deposit matches the total deposit on your statement. Let me know what was your biggest aha? Was it that you maybe had mistakes in your undeposit funds that you want to be able to record first before you match it in the bank feeds? Let me know. I can't wait to hear. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you get our future tips and tricks and give this video a thumbs up so more QuickBooks users see this training. And if you haven't been getting our tips and tricks in your inbox, we send these out every single week. You can go up above or down below to join and we'll send them straight to you. And maybe, just maybe, I'll get to see you on my Cleaning Up QuickBooks workshop so we can identify if you have any mistakes. Have an amazing day. I look forward to seeing you soon.